everyone, I'm Juanita and in this video I'm going to show you how to use some of the remaining paints available in Spider beyond just the four primary ones. Let's start with the Plots pane, which is open by default when launching Spider. To see how it works, let's open a file that will generate a couple plots from Matplotlib's documentation. You can view the generated plots in the Plots pane and browse between them using the arrows or simply clicking them in the sidebar. If you open the Paints Options menu, you will see that Fit Plots to Window is enabled by default. Disabling it will allow you to zoom the plots in or out. You can also see that Mute Inline Plotting is enabled, which prevents the same figures from also appearing in the console. Note that every time that the code is run, new copies of the plots are generated in the pane, but you can remove any you don't want to keep around with the X button in the pane toolbar. Additionally, the pane automatically updates to show the plots generated by each console as you switch between them. To use a plot in another document, click the Copy to Clipboard button and paste it wherever you want, such as a word processor. Additionally, you can save a plot as a PNG by clicking the Save icon. The Files pane, also open by default, lets you browse the contents of the directories on your computer, open them in the editor and perform a variety of other file operations. You can show or hide the size, kind and date of the files in the Paints Options menu. As you change the top level folder you are viewing in the pane, Aspire's working directory shown in the top right of the main toolbar will update, which will also be synchronized with the currently active console. Double-clicking a text file will open it in the editor and copying one or more files will allow you to paste them as an automatically formatted absolute or relative paths. Right-clicking any item will offer an array of additional options for interacting with it. You can also open a file in the system default external application or set up a custom file association in the file associations tab of the files preferences pane. For example, we can add the CSV extension and associate it with LibreOffice Calc under Associated Applications. Now, every time you click a file with this extension, it opens externally with this program. Now, let's see how to use the Outline pane to navigate within a file. First, we have to open the pane under Panes in the View menu, since it is invisible by default. As you can see, it shows you all the classes, methods and functions that are currently defined and allows you to move between them with just a click. For a very large file like this one, it is very useful to switch between classes easily instead of scrolling through the 4000 plus lines of code. You can also browse the methods of a class by expanding it using arrows or the buttons in the outline panes toolbar. The outline continuously updates to highlight the function, method or class corresponding to the cursor position in your code, so you can easily keep track of what object you are working on. Finally, by going to the Paint Options menu and activating Show All Files, you can easily switch between the scripts and modules you have open, which is particularly important for navigating larger projects. The Find Paint is another useful tool for particularly larger projects. Like the outline pane, it can be opened under panes in the view menu. This allows you to view and navigate through all occurrences of text or regular expressions in any file in the working directory, project or another custom directory. We see for example that in the main window file we import the isDarkFontColor function. If we want to quickly find the file where it was defined, we can write the string in the search bar. With this search, we get seven matches from three different files. When we click on any of these matches, the file is opened automatically in the editor right where this string appears. Finally, we'll learn how to browse documentation using the online help pane. Once you open it, again under panes in the view menu, you will see an index of modules from which documentation is available, including both those in the Python standard library and any third-party packages that may be installed in Spider's environment. For example, we can find help for NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib 
which are installed if you have downloaded Spider with Anaconda. You can browse the contents in the built-in web browser provided by the pane and click the hyperlinks within to navigate to different pages. You can also enter the name of the item you'd like documentation on in the get field or in the space over the paint's toolbar to load its information directly. If you're not sure of the object's name, use the search field to view a list of results applicable to any keyword. Now that you're familiar with a wider array of spider spans and features, you can accomplish a variety of common programming tasks with ease. Stay tuned for our next videos to further add to your scientific toolbox and as always, Happy spidering!